Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I rise to talk about St. Patrick's Technical College in uh, Elizabeth in South Australia. One of the uh, great memories I have of my time in the other place as the member for Wakefield was working with uh, the Howard government and local industry in the northern suburbs of South Australia to establish the Australian Technical College in Elizabeth. Um, one of the unique features that made this model work, made it effective, was the fact that rather than having an educational institution that just turned the handle and pumped out young people uh, who then went to try and find a job, hoping that their skills might actually suit the needs of an employer, uh, these colleges were run by a board which was chaired by industry and by parents. And so the whole curriculum, the whole way the places ran, actually suited the employer's needs right down to the kind of equipment that was there, the kind of training that was provided, and importantly, when the young people went to actually do placements with an employer, rather than the timing being set by the school based around their requirements and their thinking as teachers, it was set around industry's requirements. It was time to work in with industry so that an employer was able to work a young person into their work routine so that it suited the business and the young person got a lot more out of it. Now, the reason I bring up St Patrick's is that uh, they have just graduated their 600th apprentice. Uh, St Patrick's is one of the very few technical colleges that uh, survived the purge of 2007 uh, when then Minister Gillard, the Minister for Education, uh, took over. One of the first things she did was to get rid of the technical colleges because they were seen as very much a product of the Conservative government, which is a great shame because the model worked. And the fact that St Patrick's has survived is due in large part to the principal, Rob Thomas, and to the Catholic education sector that decided they'd been a partner in the school to start with, with the Commonwealth government. Uh, but when the colleges were going to be scrapped, they thought it was such a good model that they decided they would take on the college and actually make it a fully-fledged Catholic school part of their system, but followed the same model. And it has worked. And so we see young people going through—600 young people have gained apprenticeships uh, through that college. And so I want to congratulate the college for what they've achieved uh, over that time, as well as the employers who have become involved on the board and those uh, who, in the case of Luke Forrest, who was a Year 12 Metals and Engineering student, who was the 600th apprentice, uh, he is continuing his part-time apprenticeship or school-based apprenticeship with them now. And in November this year, he will actually become a full-time employee of Stratco in South Australia. And so I thank those companies who are stepping up the mark to provide that. Now, unfortunately, what happened uh, when they were scrapped is that there was quite an investment made. Uh, in infrastructure. The alternate plan was to have trade training centres at uh, about 2,500 schools around Australia, and some $1.4 billion was spent on infrastructure. And whilst I applaud the fact that there was an attempt to make trade training more available, the key success factor to the technical colleges was the fact that it was a demand-driven system. The employers were the ones who actually drove the syllabus, drove the way it worked, and so they brought the young people into that relationship by putting them back into a school as part of the broader school run you actually went back to the old model of having it driven by educators as opposed to being driven by the future employers so right at the moment minister lay has announced that uh, there is going to be a review um, of trade training which in south australia's case is really important because while st patrick's has survived across the rest of the state only 0.8 per cent of 15 to 19-year-olds are currently enrolled in school-based apprenticeships. It's about one in every hundred. And this is despite the fact that there is a skills shortage in South Australia, including gas fitters, plasterers, plumbers, bricklayers, concreters, electricians and carpenters. And so a model that worked was discarded. A lot of infrastructure has been built. And so what uh, the government is now doing is getting a review done. And so Ms Patricia Scott is looking at a review of trade training. 
Particularly, it's looking at the terms of how industry and the employers can be re-engaged. Well, funny old thing, that's why the technical colleges worked, because the people who need the skills are involved in setting the curriculum, setting how they're trained, determining the equipment that will be used. And so this review is also looking at an examination of how industry and employers can be involved in the training delivery to identify the models of best practice as well as strengthening those links between industry, the employers and the training organisations. The last part that I'm glad to see is that uh, the government from 1st of July this year has offer, or is offering up loans of up to $20,000 over the life of apprenticeship. And what that does is it provides some cash flow for young people who need support with housing or other costs of living to get through their degree. And so just like a university student uh, can get a loan to pay their fees, uh, and then once they have a sustainable income they can pay that back, the government's now extended that to people who are getting a trade uh, so that they also can afford the cost of the education. And so it's certainly my hope that the outcome of this review will be a situation where, certainly in South Australia, we can learn from St Patrick's Technical College and the excellent work that Rob Thomas and his team have done there, that we can learn about that interaction with employers because ultimately what it will do is provide the environment and the means for young people in Australia to actually get that trade training. There is one more element I'd like to discuss around this. Over the last 10 to 15 years, and this has been market-driven, it's not so much a policy of either side of politics, but the market has driven a lot of outsourcing where if you don't need to do it in-house, then things like some of the trade work has been outsourced to uh, SMEs, small to medium size, or even family businesses. And for them to win that work, many of them have to bid really lean. They don't have a lot of fat in their organisations anymore to do training because they've actually got a bid pretty lean to win the work. The larger organisations, including government organisations, no longer train either. And I look at Defence in particular, I look at the DSTO, the Defence Science and Technology Organisation, that used to be one of the principal training organisations in Australia for high quality uh, technicians and tradesmen uh, who often went on to have very successful careers in the private sector. Now, I'm not saying that we should be going out and distorting the marketplace in terms of how companies work, but I do flag the fact that unless companies rethink their process of outsourcing everything and cutting the margins down, we actually make it difficult to provide the environment for young people to come into a trade. Where the Defence Force can work is we have the SADI program, the Skilling Australia's Defence Industry, and at the moment, Whilst it was a good initiative, it was an initiative of the Howe government, it's been followed on though with previous governments, where that is largely focused is at the tertiary level. And so we give people a master's in systems integration or that kind of qualification. What I think we should be looking at is saying, how can we use the procurement process to say to a large prime who's bidding for work, show us your training plan that will give you this funding that would be delivered normally through SADI, Show us how you will flow this down to your second and third tier suppliers, which will enable them to bid lean to win the work, but show us how you're going to work with them so they have the resources and the ability to take on apprentices and grow that training pool. And that way it's not spending extra money, but it's using our procurement process to create the environment where the student who's gone through a technical college, the employer of a small family business who wants to take on an apprentice, has the commercial viability to do that. If we took those kinds of steps, we would start rebuilding the base of skills in our country that we need without additional impost on the budget, but it would be clever governance of this nation reshaping an opportunity and an environment that we need if we are going to prosper and if we're going to give the young people in our community hope, career and a direction for the future. Thank you.